Right, this is going to be non-technical. Um, it's an expansion on an introduction I gave to a workshop yesterday on using SOS in New Zealand using a, um, a library that we've developed. Um, I stuck it in a what is a Niwa section for people who aren't from New Zealand and that, that's basically the four things I'll be covering in the presentation. Um, that's the easy short answer, which tells, <laughs> tells people almost nothing useful whatsoever. It's perfect for Microsoft help. <laughs> the more useful answer is a slightly longer one. And a CRI is a government-owned research agency. It operates pretty much as a um, business. It has to find its funding to undertake research. And NIWA's domain is in freshwater marine atmospheric and climate, mostly. So that's us in New Zealand. Um, next question was why me? And yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I work for NIWA. Um, I've worked for NIWA and its predecessors now for over 40 years. Um, I have a role there as a program leader for environmental information, del information delivery. And NIWA manages quite a lot of sensor-based environmental data and how these data can be made available to NIWA staff, to public, to other agencies, to stakeholders, is something that is pretty relevant to my role in the organisation. Um, why did we do it? Um, essentially it was a common problem, just how to get data delivered to people who wanted access to it. And we had a discussion about this at a workshop at Horizons Council some years ago, and this is why I said that I was there, in that fresh water in New Zealand, if you're not familiar with it, it's a pretty vital asset that's an increasingly short supply. And it starts off as precipitation, as snow and hail and rain and sleet, which is sort of where Niwa's research covers it. It soaks into soils and becomes part of that, which is in New Zealand researched by Landcare Research. Um, it goes into groundwater, and in groundwater most of the work research in New Zealand is covered by GNS. And um, about 80% of freshwater monitoring in the country is actually undertaken by regional councils. So, as I say here, if we can't share our freshwater data and actually provide it as a national data set that anyone can use for freshwater management, um, New Zealand's got a serious problem. And again, Landcare Research and GNS are the three companion environmental CRIs with NIWA in New Zealand. Okay, the last question I'm covering is the long story. Um, this, the rest of what I'm going to be talking about. So we've defined the problem. And as you do when you define a problem, you form a committee. So we did, and we called it the NZEO, as it is there, I won't edit it out. Um, this included people from most of the relevant organisations, or representatives of them, and it created a single document and hasn't met since. The document it created is the New Zealand Environmental Observation Data Profile, which specified an agreed standard-based way that all these agencies would enable access to the sensor-based data, environmental data, that they actually managed. Now, so standards-based, as Byron's just been discussing, um, we were looking at the OGC standards for doing this, and those are WFS SOS, and the profile for, for the actual data was water ML2. And Despite having the specification, a fully operational system compliant with that specification has never been built. They've come close, but um, the core thing is that all the relevant agencies have generally followed the fundamental recommendations of that guideline, and the EU has also recognised this, and as far as I'm aware, it's the only non-EU origin originating document to be recognised in this space. So we thought we were doing the right thing. In terms of what's happened in New Zealand from using these sorts of standards, anyone here familiar with LAWA? It should be, a, if, <laughs> yes, Byron. <laughs> okay. Um, LAWA is a cool initiative 
council driven, they're regional council driven. Essentially they provide all their data through LOA into a public web portal with tools like Is My River Safe to Swim In? So anyone in New Zealand can go to that website, find their information about their local waterway and water quality and flow rates and the information about it. And the way the LOA portal is populated is via the councils all providing data via the standards pretty much set down in the EODP guidelines. So there's a production system where that's actually in place and working. And that quote is from a New Zealand report to the OECD. So it's a useful tool. Um, the page looks pretty much like that, with a landing page and you can drill down there and find more about the fresh water where you come from. GNS, the Institute for Geological and Nuclear Sciences, is, as I mentioned before, it's a companion CRI to NIWA, responsible for groundwater in the freshwater domain in New Zealand. They have developed a SOS based tool for, for their groundwater information. And there's the URL and what it looks like. And again, if you have a SOS client, you can talk to these, these systems and access their data. And that's sort of what's happened broadly in New Zealand in this space. Um, some more detail, because I'm here from Niwa, you have to suffer through this bit as well. Um, in 2014, through the um, summer of research supported by NESI, Niwa contracted a student who was actually working with the GNS at the time, building that system I just talked about, to develop one for Niwa as well. One of the issues we had is that the 52 North South server that we chose to use has, supports a Hibernate based tool to access data and it has a built in Postgres database to, to store the data. We already had databases that were not accessible by either of those. So we finished up modifying the tool to, to talk to our databases and to do that, we used a middleware tool that we already had in Niwa as a generic API. That caused us a major problem because every time we had to upgrade the software, we had to redeploy all the patches and changes we'd made to the core software and re-implement those each time. And that took some time to resolve. Um, problems more political than technical, as they often are. We finished up contracting 50 to North themselves to support our, serv our SOS services for us, and all our problems went away and became theirs. <laughs> um, they produced a white paper on different ways that, that their tool could access our different data sets, and decided on the same way we'd already done with the prototype, which was reassuring. So we now have quite a robust system with 52 North themselves supporting it and it's actually working and in production. We then decided we would do the same thing for our hydrometric data as well as our climate data and our hydrometric data is managed using the Aquarius Informatics and I'll spell it out in full because if I use the AI acronym people get confused. Um, the same data connector application we use we have a version that talks to Aquarius Informatics so 52 North could very easily deploy another, another instance of their server that spoke to this database. And then once that was working, we added water quality data as well. The latest one we've, in, for the fourth instance of a service, we actually have a team predicting flows for freshwater reaches in New Zealand and they produce the outputs as NetCDF files. We now have an ingester for those NetCDF files to load them into the native 52 North Postgres database with a SOS service providing those forecasts to those aren't yet public but um, the system's there as a prototype and a test. We have at least one other council in New Zealand apart from NIWA is using Aquarius Informatics to manage their sensor data and we are allowing other people to use, but we aren't providing support for our database connector so other people can actually 
use the same solution to provide a soft service on data from Aquarius. One of the more fundamental problems is, as all of you presumably know, if you stand up a WMS or WFS service, you have a choice of dozens if not hundreds of applications that are ready clients that will talk to that and allow you to put the information on your computer and actually work with it, download with it, it all goes. There are no real clients for SOS services as yet. And it meant that Niwa had stood up this wonderful standards compliance service that was sort of state mm -hmm. of the art in New Zealand and no one could really do anything with it. And there aren't really any commercial tools that sort of do, do a lot either. So the next chapter in the story was developing some client tools. And some of you may have been at a workshop, or some of you were at a workshop yesterday we ran, where we went through how to use our SOS4R package to develop your own shiny application to interact with a SOS tool, put it on a map, query it, view the data from an R and shiny based approach. Um, there was a SOS4R, as I say there, but it was written by a student, it was only SOS1, it didn't work. Um, the, if anyone's actually used the native SOS requests under the OGC specification. They are not intuitive. They don't fit any sensible workflow that I can think of. So um, once we built the tool to support that, we went to item two on the list, which is to add an abstraction layer so that the, the R tool provided commands in R that allow you to have a much more sort of user and workflow approach to requesting data from a SOS service. And we had the workshop, as I say, there. So that's almost our last chapter. Um, 52 North have put up a, I think, almost exemplar reference page for this tool. So if anyone wants to know how you can use this thing, if you can remember that or find out where that is or contact me later, um, those URLs will find that page. Yes, you can take a picture of that and it'll work too. Um, yep, almost done. Well on time. Um, people may be here familiar with SourcePole, one of the big um, QGIS developers. We funded them to develop a SOS client for QGIS. So any QGIS user can install this tool and connect to a SOS service much as you would a WFS service. You can then display on the map all the locations. You can get a list of all the different phenomena that are available. You can select the phenomena. And I shouldn't talk about it. I should actually run through the slides I've got that show it. Um, so yes, you define a service as a URL. You get a list of the different observations that are available, the phenomena that you can actually access from the service. You can download data and visualise that data. And that's basically the end of the story. Up to, up to now, it's ongoing. They're, they're a, um, work, all the work in progress. And I can't thank enough the people who sort of enabled this to happen and contributed to the standards and the guidelines and the guidance that enabled it all, all to come together. The open source developers who actually build these things and let everyone use them and provide tools like QGIS and the 52 North tools that everyone can do as an open source one. Um, I do need to thank Niwa because open source, open standards, open data is a paradigm I've been supporting for longer than too many of you have been alive. And the guys who put this event together, I think, deserve an enormous amount of um, kudos for, for doing it, not for just making it possible, but for making it the success it's already become. And with that, any questions? Thanks, Brent, and thanks to Neewa for the support for the conference as well. <laughs> Um, it was me, but that was me. That's <laughs> <laughs> my, my budget, but thank you. Don't put that too widely. <laughs> um, uh, so there are now two clients consuming SOS services. Is there more than one organisation publishing these services? Um, 
most of the councils are. In the US at the moment, every federal and county and city agency is required to provide their freshwater data to US Geological Survey. Geological Survey has also, after NEWA, so we did it first, they've also purchased Aquarius Informatics as their management tool. And they have now specified that SOS is the mechanism by which all those agencies will use to submit it so they don't have to deal with spreadsheets and emails and FTP servers and everything else you can think of as a means of getting data to them. Um, at a slide from a USGS presentation, um, I asked the guy that gave it if, the, if the, what the slide said was in fact true and he said yes it was and three quarters of the agencies on his slide that provided data to USGS were using the 52 North server. Um, as I said, the EODP document's actually been adopted by, via an EU via Inspire. So in terms of um, where things are going in New Zealand and globally, I think SOS is becoming quite firmly ensconced as a viable way to go. The one caveat I have there is that sensor data can quite readily move into the realms of big data even by current standards and we haven't tested the scalability of it for genuine big data. That's currently a work in progress and if I get to this event next year you might hear about it there. <laughs> I've got a question. Um, well, firstly, um, thank you for, for attending and, and presenting. Um, I was at the workshop yesterday and that was a, a great deal of fun. Um, I hadn't done any R programming, programming before, so that was, that was an introduction to both R and SOS all in one. Um, and Shiny. And Shiny, yes. Um, where do you see this going in the future? O obviously, there's a lot of... Um, I, I guess there's a lot, a lot of work that's been, that NIWA has done um, in this space. Where, I, I, where do you see sort of like, do you see places like Australia or other countries in the Pacific picking this up or have you had discussions? Um, not really. What we're trying to do is solve our own problems and they're not problems that are unique to NIWA. They, anyone who captures and manages a sensor environmental data shares those problems. So we have a solution and we're happy to sort of publicise and share and help others sort of apply our solution if they think it's relevant for them. Um, I'm not going to force on someone who doesn't want. I've got quite enough to do without, <laughs> without that. Um, yeah, I think, I think the same issue we're going to run into if this grows as I believe it might and hope it will, the same problem that we have with things like WFS and WMS, etc., is that, yes, agencies can provide all these web services, but how the hell do the users find out where they are? And so um, some sort of catalogue or ability to discover those services so that your QGIS tool can plug into Horizons and the KISTAS service and NIWA and GNS Groundwater and every other council and US Geological Survey, in theory, if you know the URL for those services, you can connect to that and have access to all those data. And that's a earth-shaking capability, but you have the discoverability problem for the services. And, and I don't know what the solution for that is. Byron can hopefully help us. <laughs> okay, everyone, um, would you like to give Brent a round of applause?